Hello, my name is Eric, and today I'm going to show you how to change the hydrodynamic bearing on a PVWJ C-frame pump. Uh, this procedure is going to be the same for the oil gear PVWJ 064, the PVWJ 076, 098, and PVWJ 130. What I like to do is roll the pump up so I can work with the rear valve plate. Well, I've loosened two of the cap screws already, and with the pump in this position, I don't have to worry about the valve plate, valve plate sliding down or falling, and the rotating group is going to stay in place. So as I loosen the cap screws, I decompress the fulcrum ball spring, and by the time I get to this point, that spring is fully decompressed, so there's no concern that the valve plate is going to you know, pop off of the pump. Last cap screw out. When I can remove my valve plate, this gives me access to the rotating group, and I'm going to need to take that out to access the hydrodynamic bearing. Alex, will you give me a hand? So I'm going to tip that up so the shaft is horizontal. And Alex is going to slowly rotate that as he pulls it out. That allows the uh, piston and shoes to come off of the swash block. Thank you. At this point, this also gives us a chance to inspect the rotating group or change it if it needs to be changed. But more importantly, it gives us access to the hydrodynamic bearing so we can change that component if necessary. As we look down into the bore, we can see that the hydrodynamic bearing is held in place by a spiral lock ring. That ring is going to have a small tab on it, and by using a flat bladed screwdriver, we can pop that tab out of its counter bore, remove the spiral lock ring, and then remove the hydrodynamic bearing. So I, I find the end of the spiral lock ring. I'm able to pop that out of place. Once I get that started, I can slowly walk that spiral lock ring out and carefully remove it. Uh, the edges of, the, of this can be sharp sometimes. We're going to have two O-rings we need to mind. There's going to be the case O-ring that fits in this chamfer, and there's going to be a high pressure O-ring. That usually stays in place. We're going to double check that it's uh, in place. Now we can reach into the cavity and remove the hydrodynamic bearing. I like to do that with both fingers. I reach into the hydrodynamic bearing. I wiggle it a little bit back and forth. And I can slowly walk it out at this point. And out comes the hydrodynamic bearing. It uh, really does drop in that, e that easily, especially if there's oil or fluid in the pump. You'll notice that there is a roll pin in the back. That roll pin drops into a recess in the case. There are several recesses, so there's not one correct one. So at this point, if we need to inspect or replace the hydrodynamic bearing, it's very simple to do so. And putting it back together, we'll make sure that roll pin is facing inward. And we'll walk that in just as easily. Don't force this. If you try to pound it in or force it in, it will cock. So that's going to drop down to a shoulder in the case. I'll give that a slight rotation to make sure the uh, roll pin comes up against a uh, spot in the case. Then I can go ahead and put my spiral lock back in. I'm going to do that by putting this tab into the recess and then slowly walk that around as I push in with my fingers. Push the tab into the recess and slowly walk that around. And that should snap into place. So at this point, my snap ring is in place and I'm going to be able to insert the rotating group. Before I do that, I'd like to put a little fluid both on the swash block and on the shoes, get those uh, a little bit lubricated before we start running for the first time. So Alex, if you don't mind giving me a hand. 
and rotate this. And then as he's putting that in, I'm going to turn the shaft slightly as he turns the rotating group. And the splines and the shafts, shaft should engage. And the rotating group engages. Thank you, Alex. At that point, I can confirm that it's installed correctly by pressing on the uh, cylinder barrel. I can feel the spring compress slightly. That tells me that the cylinder barrel is properly seated and the shoes are against the swash block. So double check our O-rings, our high pressure O-ring is in place. And we'll put the case O-ring into its chamfer. This is a dovetail groove, so the O-ring is just a little bigger than the ID of the dovetail. I like to do this dry. If I put grease in the uh, dovetail, sometimes when you tighten the valve plate, it causes the O-ring to pop out of the groove. Make sure that that O-ring is in place in the dovetail. Then we can take our valve plate, ensure that our suction is going to be on the bottom, pressure port on the top. Then in place, once we start the first cap screw, the second one, then we'll install the remaining two cap screws, tighten the uh, cap screws to the correct torque and we're finished.